Hi, in this video we're going to discuss binary operation tables. If we have a finite set S, we can actually use a table to define a binary operation on the set S. So let's say we had the finite set S of two elements, and we'll denote those elements as A and B. Now we can construct this binary operation table where we have the elements A and B on this side and down here, and we want to define this binary operation for a set S. So remember, in order to be a binary operation, we actually have to have a function mapping S cross S into S. So for each ordered pair in the set S cross S, we need to make sure first that it gets mapped into exactly one element, and second, that that element is again in the set S. So let's look at first the ordered pair, A star A, and we want to compute this using our binary operation. So we want to see what element this gets mapped to. And remember, this is just the same as writing a star a. So in order to be a binary operation, we can either map this into a or into b. So I'll put a slash b. We have two options here. The ordered pair a comma b. Again, we have two options for this. We can either map it into a or into b. Similarly for the last two ordered pairs. So for each spot here, we can just decide which element it gets mapped into, and then that will be our specific binary operation. So one example could be a star a equals a, a star b equals a, b star a equals a, and b star b equals b. This is just one binary operation on this set. We could also define a different binary operation, and each time we change one of these elements or rearrange these in a different order, that gives us a different binary operation on the set S. So now let's ask this question. How many different binary operations can be defined on a set S with two elements? Well, if we look at this binary operation table here, where this represents any binary operation, we have two options for A star A, two options for A star B, two options for B star A, and two options for B star B. And since each unique ordering is a different binary operation, that tells us that we actually have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 different binary operations on a set with two elements. So we can actually rewrite this as 2 to the 4th. And of course we know that this is 2 to the 2 squared. So we can say there's actually 16 different binary operations on a set with two elements. Now let's do the same thing but with three elements this time instead of 2. Now let's see how many different ways we can fill out this binary operation table with elements A, B, and C. A star A has three options, A star B has three options, and you'll see that every spot on our binary operation table has three different options. So that tells us that we have three to the ninth, or three to the three squared, different binary operation tables on a set with three elements. Now let's generalize this and look at the case when we have n elements. A binary operation table with n elements has n squared spots, and each spot has n different choices. So that tells us that we're going to get n to the n squared different binary operation tables on a set with n elements. Now let's ask a slightly different question. How many different commutative binary operations can be defined on a set with two elements? So first let's remember what does it mean to be commutative. In order for a binary operation to be commutative, we need a star b to equal b star a for every element a and b in the set s, where s is a set that the binary operation is defined on. So here's a table with two elements a and b, and let's go ahead and see how many different commutative tables we can get with this. a star a has two options, a star b has two options, but now when we look at b star a, we have to remember that we've already defined an element for a star b. And since we want a commutative binary operation, we know that b star a has to equal a star b. So whatever element we chose here for a star b, we must have the same element down here for b star a. So that tells us we really only have one option for b star a, and it's directly related to whatever we chose up here for a star b. And then finally, b star b has two options. So this tells us that we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 1 different binary operation tables that are commutative. Now I'm going to rewrite this a little bit and it will make more sense later why I'm doing this. I'm first going to look at the elements in the diagonal. 
Notice that the length of the diagonal will always be equal to the length of the square or the number of elements we were given. So the diagonal here will have two spots. Notice also that the spots on the diagonal correlate to A star A and B star B. And since these don't rely on any other ordering, there will always be two choices for our spots on the diagonal. So we can write 2 squared, and then we can multiply this by everything above the diagonal, so 2 to the first power, and then multiply it by 1 to the first power. And this is the same as what we had before, but just rewritten a little bit differently. So this will be the number of commutative binary operations on a set with two elements. Now let's look at this question with three elements. Now we have the elements A, B, and C, and we have a table that will give us nine spots. So let's go ahead and compute how many different options we'll get. A star A has three options, A star B has three options, and A star C has three options. B star A must be the same as A star B, so we only have one option here. B star B has three options, and B star C has three options. C star A is the same as A star C, so we only have one option here. And the same goes for C star B, we only have one option. And now C star C has three options. So now if we count it, we can see that we have three to the six different commutative binary operations. But again, let's write this a little more efficiently. So we'll first look at the diagonal, and each spot in the diagonal has three options. And of course, there's three spots in our diagonal, so we can have three to the third. Then each spot above our diagonal has three options, and we're going to raise this to some power. I'll leave it blank for right now. And then each spot below our diagonal has one option, and that's going to be raised to some power as well. So let's just cross out this diagonal right now, and notice that the number of spots above the diagonal equals the number of spots below the diagonal. So if we take all the spots we have in our table, and then minus the spots in the diagonal, and then divide it by 2, that will give us the number of spots we have here above the diagonal, and that equals also the number of spots here we have below the diagonal. So let's go ahead and write that up here. We have 9 spots in our table, minus the 3 spots in the diagonal, and then divided by 2, and then this will give us the number of spots we have up here, and we can write the same number over here, so 9 minus 3 divided by 2 over here as well. And this can be written as 3 to the 6 different commutative binary operations on a set with 3 elements. Now finally, let's generalize this to n elements. Again, if we have our binary operation table with n elements, the diagonal will have n elements, and each spot in the diagonal will have n options. So that tells us we're going to get n raised to the n different options on our diagonal. Then we can multiply this by everything above the diagonal. And everything above the diagonal will have n options raised to some power. And everything below the diagonal will have one option raised to that same power. And so just like we had in our previous example, this power will be given by n squared minus n divided by 2, where the n squared is all the spots in our table, the n is all the spots in our diagonal, and then we divide it by 2 to just give us the spots in the top half, and we can do the same over here, n squared minus n divided by 2, and this will give us the number of spots in the bottom half. So now if we simplify this, we get n to the n squared plus n divided by 2. And this will be the number of different commutative binary operations on a set with n elements.